Barry's first idea is Alphabet. Now, you think the market is pricing them as a low-growth story, but you think investors are wrong? I, well, I think it's we're finding out that advertising is very cyclical. And I don't know about you, but I haven't seen a lot of crypto ads <laughs> recently. <laughs> which quite is true, yeah. You know, it's a, was a huge part of their business, although I'm seeing a nonstop uh, betting ads. But um, it's cyclical, and we're, you, that's the easiest place to cut if you're worried about a recession is the spending on, on Google. Um, I think the, the spending has been less pronounced, or, or I mean, there's been more pullbacks on uh, alternatives like Snap. You saw Meta had pretty decent results, but the, mm -hmm. I, I mean, these companies are now so big that it's very, very hard to move the needle. Mm -hmm. um, that said, there's a lot of initiatives that Google Alphabet can do, whether it's pricing, launching new services, uh, getting into AI. Yes, everybody's talking about Chat GPT mm -hmm. as uh, you know. Is that going to disrupt search? Is that going to change <laughs> search? Is that going to change the world? And Google's like, hello, we're the guys who invented all this stuff. Uh -huh. And uh, just wait and see what we come out with, and you're going to all come to us. Meanwhile, uh, you know, there's over a billion searches a day on Google, right? It's not like it's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube is the most dominant platform, uh, always innovative. They've launched, a sh like, YouTube shorts, kind of like... TikToks or Reels. I've seen those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've yeah. seen those, right? And they're addictive. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm so addicted to Facebook, uh, re uh, Instagram Reels. I love watching cats punch other animals. <laughs> it's just it's very addicting. <laughs> cats are mean. They sure are. They're very yeah, mean. Yeah. I don't I'm know how to... anybody could like cats. Yeah, so uh, anyway, valuation on Google, I think it's very undemanding. I think it's trading at 20 times earnings. The balance sheet is unbelievable. It's going to be buying back $60 billion of stock this year and growing. And I think it's finally, as well as Amazon, focusing on cost cutting, which is going to lead to improvements in the bottom line. Just be patient. I do actually like cats. I like dogs and cats. <laughs> I like cats. I yeah. like, it's funny watching them punch things. <laughs> oh, they really are. Yeah. Um, TMX Group, um, I suppose some people might say, well, if the stock market goes up, a stock exchange of shares are, are likely to go up. For sure. It's a very defensive business. So half their business is selling um, data, hmm. which is recurring revenue. Uh, so that information that you're showing now about TMX's stock price, you're ultim someone's ultimately paying TMX to get the information on it, mm -hmm. as well as listing fees. Um, yeah, it's a cyclical business, kind of like advertising. When the markets stink, uh, who's going to list their shares? But I think uh, with the rebounding stock markets, and the TSX did a lot better in 2022 than other indices around the world, uh, maybe there'll be more listings going forward. Uh, great, it's a dividend payer. I think it's grown its dividend every year since 2016. And the valuation compared to competitors is quite cheap. I don't know why it's pulled back here, uh, because it, it's instituted a lot of pricing uh, in, for 2023. And I think earnings are going to grow by double digits for the next few years from here. Stocks trading at 17 or 18 times earnings for a really defensive, high-quality business. And you said um, every year since 2016, so through the pandemic and everything, they raised the dividend. They raised the dividend. Uh, it's, it's always had been a dividend payer, but it was at one point Remember, the London Stock Exchange tried to take yeah, it over, yeah. and it did, uh, it, it did some weird payouts. But going forward, it's been focusing on dividends, and it has a nice balance sheet. There's more acquisitions to come. They really want to focus on data and recurring revenues. You're looking at a yield, uh, I think, of about 2.5% on uh, Not TMX. Bad. Yeah. OK. Your final idea is CN Rail. CN Rail, yeah. So, I mean, similar to like a TMX, it's a obviously a railroad, but TMX is a railroad too, right? Every year they raise pricing. Um, you want to move goods, there's only one railroad. With TMX, there's only one stock exchange in, really in Canada. So uh, that's the type of business we love. Um, the stock pulled back after the earnings, the fourth quarter earnings yep. release, because the guidance really confounded the street. Um, this was a company that reported 25% earnings growth in 2022, and then for 2023, guiding for 5% earnings growth mm. or, or less, yet half, all that growth would come from share buybacks. So essentially, they're saying we're not going to have any growth. I think they're being very, very conservative. Mm. I think the economy is going to turn out to be, be better than CN Rail is. Uh, expecting and maybe they're playing a game which is we want to beat and, and raise the guidance from here and start at a low base. So nice entry point for one of the greatest success stories in Canada. Just remind us why would a company management want to do that? Be excessively cautious with its prediction. 
A number. I mean, everybody is worried about the global uncertainty right. in 2023. And this is a railroad shipping goods. A lot of it is intermodal, mm -hmm. whether it's shipping cars or, you know, patio furniture. And if the economy slows, there's going to be less of that as well as commodities. So I think rightfully so to be conservative, but I think they've just been overly conservative. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe it just behooves them to be that if we're heading into an uncertain time. And maybe we could just throw up a 10-year chart for CN Rail. I'm not sure if we saw it, because not so long ago, that stock was hitting record highs. Yes, uh, and 27 years uh, in a row of dividend increases. Um, we know it was subject of activist pressure. Yeah. New management came in. The activists got their way, and, and, and CN has delivered on that. Last year was a terrific year. Uh, I think the stock could trade at 25 times earnings. I think it could do over $8 a share in earnings. I think it's a $200 stock uh, as long as it, if the sentiment picks up from here.